Hello and welcome back. Today we will take a look at the Holbein Artist Gouache set. Holbein is a Japanese brand. They produce really nice watercolors and gouache paints. I saw on the Japanese Amazon that they have released seasonal sets of gouache, which are supposed to be traditional colors of Japan. And this here is the spring set. The packaging is just this cardboard box and there's nothing on the back side. I also already own a set that includes 30 colors. Here you can see it. And the paints are super small, only 5 milliliters. Now let's open up the spring set. Here you can see the paints and they are three times the size of the other paints that I have. Here you can see all the paints up close. I think Holbein has changed their packaging a little bit. Next I'm going to swatch these paints and then I will show you some paintings that I've done with these colors. The first color that I'm swatching is Vermilion. It's a lovely warm red that immediately makes me think of Japanese shrines. The next one is called Pale Coral and I think this will be great for either cherry trees or skin tones. Next up is a yellow paint that's named after the Japanese carrier flower and it's called Yamabuki in Japanese. There's also a yellow kind of koi fish that's called Yamabuki koi because it's the exact same color. Here you can see a lemon. This one felt like the most transparent one out of the set. We're moving on to light ochre, which is an earth tone and has the best light fastness rating out of these colors. As you can see here, it's really not very opaque. The next one is very special, it's called Pale Patina. It reminds me of some of the rooftops that I saw in Japan. I'm not sure if it's very suitable for painting trees or bushes though. The next one is called Seedling and it's a really beautiful bright green that's very fitting for spring. The next one is called Myosotis Blue and again it's named after a flower, but you might know the name Forget-Me-Not Flower rather than Myosotis. Next up is Dayflower Blue and apparently this flower got its name because it only blooms for one day. And we've got another paint named after flower, which is Bellflower. It's a lovely purple. Next one is Silver Grey. And I always find it very convenient to have a grey in my gouache sets, so that I don't need to waste my white and black mixing one. It's going to come in very handy painting any kinds of walls or stones. Last but not least, we get antique silver. All of these sets include one metallic color and the spring set includes silver. Here you can see all of them. Silver is very shiny. Overall, most of these paints are opaque, or at least semi-opaque, and they're all very bright. There are not many dark colors here. As I mentioned, I already own a set of 30 paints from Holbein. This set is lovely, but it includes some paints that are way too bright, and it's kind of missing a proper purple. I felt that some of the paints in the spring set filled in missing gaps in my larger set. That being said, 
there was a bit of overlap between those two sets. It's most noticeable with the two yellows from the spring set. The Dayflower blue looks similar to some of the blues that I have already, but the Myosotis blue is new. The two greys look pretty similar, but that doesn't bother me. Now the big question is what to paint with these. I showed this set to my family and my little brother requested a custom painting. Here you can see a sketch that he drew at the age of 23 for this painting. He wanted a Japanese girl with an umbrella in a kimono standing by a river across from a pagoda and next to her should be a cherry tree. I haven't really painted landscapes in gouache before, so I thought I would practice a couple of these elements first. I started out with a pagoda and tried to imagine from which perspective this girl might be looking at the pagoda. Next up was a Japanese bridge and a cherry tree. And I didn't know how to paint the right side of the bridge so I just left it blank. From here on, I got severely sidetracked. I was staying at my parents again and I painted Osaka Kase from one of their books. It was so much fun that I only want to paint castles from now on. You can also see that I used a lot of the pale patina for this one. Lastly, I also painted a Maiko which is a geisha in training, based on one of the photos in their book. All of the sketches that you've seen so far were painted exclusively with the spring set and the addition of some white. At this point I'd put off painting the landscape scene for my little brother for a few months, but Christmas was approaching so it was time to get it done. Here you can see one of my first sketches I was just trying out the paints and seeing what kind of color combinations I could get. This sketch taught me a lot, like that this path should become more narrow at the top and that the tree at the right side was too large in relation to the trees on the other side of the river. I tried a few more sketches, but they were mostly the same thing. Finally, I had the idea to paint in portrait format instead of landscape format. I felt this would be best to tell the story of the girl walking towards the pagoda across the bridge and lead the eye of the viewer across the painting. I transferred my sketch onto Saunders Waterford hot pressed paper. I prefer very smooth paper for my gouache paintings and this paper only has a very slight texture. Here you can see some of the details on the girl. Here's our bridge. And here's our pagoda. I didn't sketch too many other details because, to be honest, I don't know how to paint trees or water or a water reflection. So I was hoping I could just make it up as I go along. Here I'm starting the painting process and on the left side of the screen you can see a disposable palette. I quite like using these with gouache because gouache just dries and you can re-wet it anytime and then reuse it. This painting was quite challenging. It took me a very long time to realize that the limited palette of the spring set was really making the colors look a little bit strange. That is because you can only mix the vermilion and bellflower, the red and the purple, in order to get some kind of shadow color. And after a while I found this to be too limiting and it made the landscape look a little bit too unrealistic for my liking. This only got better when I added a brown from the winter set, which I actually bought in order to get some darker colors to supplement the spring set. Also, I really just wanted the winter set. Still, it took quite some time until I felt this painting was coming to a good place. And I think 
a big issue was that I forgot to paint fallen cherry tree blossoms on the ground below the trees. Once I added those at the very end, it really came together. The trees still look a little awkward, but my little brother liked the painting and I finished it just on Christmas Eve before we left to go to my parents. All in all, I can say that I love this set. If you are someone who enjoys painting Japanese subjects, I think you will have great fun with these. I just put on some music now for the rest of the painting. Thank you for watching and see you next time.